my name is Hugh Reed. I'm the president and CEO of uh, ReedLawGroup.com. Uh, one of the things we do is we help people pass their bar exam, exam on PassYourBar.com. We also help them throughout law school in LawSchoolTutoring.com. So if you need help in any one of these areas, uh, please call us 800-852-3926 or go to our website at ReedLawGroup.com. Today I want to talk about torts and how to be successful on torts examinations, both for multiple choice purposes and for essay purposes. We actually have two other uh, YouTube uh, videos available, how to be successful on multiple choice exams and how to be successful on essay writing exams, and I would suggest that you look at both. But the best thing you can do is call us, we can help you, and we can tell you exactly what you need to do. So let's look at torts first of all. Torts obviously is important for first year students. It's important for the multiple uh, multi-state bar exam. Now I just don't talk about the multi-state bar exam. I actually take it every six months. Uh, I have a multi-jurisdictional law practice representing U.S. servicemen and women worldwide. And as a former uh, military pilot, I, uh, I love mnemonics and memory devices. In fact, I want to give you some of these so that we can understand some of these uh, basic concepts and we can, uh, under, uh, we can spit it out during exam anxiety um, uh, conditions, much like when pilots are trying to learn their emergency procedures, they have to understand them step by step by step immediately. They can't cogitate over the fact. And the same is true with you. When you take an examination, you're going to be under a lot of anxiety and you're going to have to be able to spit out these concepts. So I want to give you some of these mnemonics and memory devices. If you like them, call us. We've got plenty of them that go over all these major concepts. And this is not a professorial approach, even though I've been a law professor. Uh, I can tell you this is a very bottom line or a test taking approach that will make you score high on the, on the exam. You see all exams test us on three concepts or three major things. Number one, they test us on law knowledge, law knowledge. Number two, they test us on law analysis, law analysis. And number three, they test us on law expression. Can we verbalize or express ourselves like lawyers? So that's really what you have to do on every examination. So let's go through torts. I always start with the Bible, if I want to quote the Bible. And the Bible, to me, is the outline published by the National Conference of Bar Examiners that get, tell us, tells us that torts is tested in five major categories. Category one, intentional torts. Category two, negligence. Category three, strict liability. Category four, product liability. And category five, other torts, hybrid torts, I call them, like defamation, misrepresentation, the privacy torts, and so forth. So let me give you some approaches to torts. Torts for multiple choice purposes is especially important, just like contracts, you're going to get 33 questions out of 200 on the multi-state bar exam, where the other subjects you'll get 31 questions. So it's very important. And negligence is very, very important in torts because half of the questions are going to be tested on negligence. So the outline you should be studying from, and we can give you a word outline so you can annotate it for class if you're in law school, should follow the outline published by the National Conference of Bar Examiners. And you should have questions or a battery of questions that can train you on each line item on that, on that uh, outline. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're just trying to study torts, and it's just too much to handle. So let's, let me tell you how I approach any tort question. I ask myself three questions. Number one, are they testing me on intentional torts? Intentional torts. And I know there's seven of them. I remember them with ABC fit, assault, battery, conversion, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, trespass to chattels, and trespass to land. Those are the seven intentional torts. Are they testing me on one of the seven intentional torts? If the answer is no, then I ask myself, are they testing me on strict liability? There's only three major categories of strict liability. I remember them with the acronym PAW, P-A-W. That is products liability, 
A, abnormally dangerous activities or ultra-hazardous activities, and the W, wild animals, wild animals or domesticated animals with some propensity to do harm. If the answer is no, then they got to be testing me on negligence or one of the five hybrid torts that are based on negligence. And then four-part test for negligence, as you're all aware, are duty, breach, causation, and damages. So, is it an intentional torts, A, B, C, fit? All right, assault, battery, conversion, um, in intentional infliction of emotional distress, uh, false imprisonment, uh, I left out false imprisonment, sorry, trespass to chattels, trespass to land. And I know the prima facie case that is common to all seven intentional torts are act, intent, causation. Three parts, act, intent, causation. There are only two of the seven intentional tort which require the additional proof of damages. Trespass to chattels, trespass, uh, strike that, intentional infliction of emotional distress. Trespass to chattels, intentional infliction of emotional distress. So you gotta know what the seven intentional torts are. And by the way, once you know them, what are the defenses to the seven intentional torts? Well, I remember them with the mnemonic darn cops, D-A-R-N-C-O-P-S. Discipline cases, discipline cases, arrest cases, both public and private arrest, distinguish the two. R, recapture of chattels, N, necessity, C, consent, consent, O, others, comma, defense of, P, property, comma, defense of, and finally S, self-defense. So is it an intentional tort? A, B, C, fit. What are the defenses to intentional torts? Darn cops. The prima facie case, three-part test, act, intent, causation, only two of the seven require the additional element of damages, IIED, and trespass to channels. What else can they test you in intentional torts? Well, they can test you about the transferred intent doctrine, where an act, the tort, tortious act, can transfer from person to person or tort to tort, or from person to person and tort to tort. I remember them with FAB, F-A-B, false imprisonment, arrest, uh, assault, and battery. False imprisonment, assault, and battery. In older cases, trespass to land and trespass to channels were also uh, considered intentional towards newer modern law. They are not. So FAB, false imprisonment, assault, and battery. All right, let's go to, um, let's go to strict liability briefly because I, I don't have a lot of time. Strict liability, I've said, were either products liability, and by the way, the elements, the, um, uh, the prima facie case for products liability under Restatement 402A is, um, is don't come crying to me because of the crummy product. Don't come crying to me because of the crummy product. And that stands for defect, come control when it left defendant's control, Crying changes, no changes or alterations. B, business, business, the seller was in the business of selling that product. C, causation, causation. P, privity, no privity is required. And finally, the defenses to strict liability. AIM, AIM, assumption of the risk, instructions, failure, failure to follow instructions, and M, misuse, misuse. Well, these mnemonics are plentiful for all the major topics that are tested. We've got plenty of them. Go to readlawgroup.com and register. You can get them all in torts if you like. Or call us at 800-852-3926, 800-852-3926, or go to readlawgroup.com. Thanks for listening and good luck.